Welcome back to Professional Wrestling, the bros that talk about anything and everything in the world of professional wrestling. Do not adjust your sets. Yes, I am the chosen lawyer, but co-hosting with me today and for the next couple episodes is not JPL Curry. It's <laughs> another lawyer in our law firm, Corman's LLP, and it's Taimur Qureshi. Taimur, welcome to Professional Wrestling. Thank you, Jonathan, for the amazing introduction. Uh, first time co-host. Um, have been following the podcast along. Um, like Jonathan, I'm also a very um, keen wrestling enthusiast from my childhood growing up. Not so much anymore. I still kind of keep up to date with the WWE happenings. But um, when you grow up on this stuff, it never leaves you. <laughs> it's funny how you can uh, evolve through life, you know, go through teen hoods, adult years, early adult years. And there's points where you start, stop, start, stop with wrestling. But whenever you're ready for it, like a good old soap opera, it's always there for you when you're ready. Oh, absolutely. And, uh, you know, what's uh, entertaining is that it just, um, they, ever since, especially for WWE, I guess, these days, the less involvement from Vince McMahon's side in creative, um, the more you notice them kind of actually connect with, you know, things that are going on in the modern day world. So, you know, bringing, like I'm sure bringing, people like Bad Bunny or like Logan Paul, right? Like that that was not that was not Miss McMahon's idea, right? Like he was not the one, oh yeah, we need to bring these guys on. Like he probably didn't know who Bad Bunny was. He probably didn't know who Logan uh, Paul was before they brought on. So it's nice where they're trying to keep it connected to the modern day um, pop culture as well, right? But they do uh, still keep that traditional aspect of it um, involved with it in terms of like the sport, the sports part of it. Right. And then the entertainment part of it is where they try to connect it with the modern day audience. Well, it feels like everything that goes right, it means triple H is involved and everything that goes wrong. Vince McMahon is involved. So for example, uh, when, when somebody comes out of the blue that you don't expect, like, for example, I'm thinking of a very, very tall wrestler, very powerful wrestler. Uh, he's managed by MVP. Do you know who I'm talking about? Yes, yes. <laughs> the Nigerian giant. <laughs> almost. Almost, uh, almost. Almost, they call <laughs> yeah. him. But no, it's Omos. Yeah. I actually like Omos, honestly. I like Omos. I like the whole shtick with Omos. But when you see him all of a sudden featured in pay-per-views out of nowhere and these empty feuds, you know it's Vince because Vince loves his big guys. When you see... The guys that as far as with athletic ability, maybe even a little shorter, but they're really good on the mic, you know, that's Triple H. So it's funny, you know, the graduation from NXT. I mean, the classic example, I think, is NXT, the evolution of NXT. Mm -hmm. You know, with Triple H, you know, fostering an NXT, NXT blossomed. Look how many people came out of NXT. You know, the list goes on and on as far as Bailey goes. Uh, Braun Breaker's on his way. Uh, you know, we, we, could, we could talk all day as far as NXT goes and modern day and, pre and previous incarnations. But all of a sudden, when it became NXT 2.0 and Vince McMahon becomes a cook in the kitchen, so to speak, you know that it's going downhill. And as soon as they got Vince out of there, they rebranded again, you know, and we're in the glory days. But I got to ask you, and before we jump into today's topic, we've got a really serious topic to talk about, hint, bloodline. It's always yeah. about the bloodline. <laughs> Do you remember... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you gotta acknowledge. You gotta acknowledge. <laughs> Do you know what first ever brought you to wrestling, Timor? Like, where did you? Besides, obviously, being a real estate lawyer, corporate right, lawyer, right. and knowing that yeah. was your path. When did you know that you were a lover of wrestling? Would you remember when it first hit you? Yeah, well, it was definitely before I decided to become a lawyer. <laughs> um, this is probably so. Um, I am so I'm born in 1990. So I grew up in like the tail end of the Attitude Era, right? Um, I would say. Um, so obviously, yeah, growing up in that era, like that was a peak wrestling boom period of as any wrestling fan knows, right? Um, but it was uh, what brought me into wrestling was, um, I, I guess it was reruns of um, like Hulk Hogan, Macho Man, like the Golden Era, I guess that's what they would call it, right? They, like the Paco era. That's kind of where you know watching it back in the day with with my dad, like I would say like early mid '90s, right? Mm -hmm. Just before kind of um uh hogan jumped ship and went to wcw right like that's where i kind of started you know it was like bret hart was kind of on the rise that was he was like one of my early favorites uh, the hit bret the hitman hart hitting the sharpshooter with the cool shit that he could give to the audience right that that's kind of what brought me into it and then just maybe i guess a year a couple years after that when the rock came up right so i remember i think this is like 98 99 um everyone knew by about stone cold 
um, by then, right? Rocky Maivia when he uh, was um, coming up as Rocky Maivia, I actually did not know who in the that nation. was. Yeah, in the nation. And then when he kind of, you know, like turned heel, cool rock, right? And then became the rock. I remember watching like an episode of Monday Night Raw and this, this guy was just hitting the rope back and forth, just had that kind of electricity to him. And I'm like, who is this guy, right? And then like kind of the promos he would cut, that kind of just brought me into it. And then that's that's kind of, I guess he's the one who really, really, really drew me into wrestling as a um, as an entertainment prophet. Like before, before it obviously before I knew what kayfabe was, all of that, right? When when I when when the when they still had the hoodwink over me, right? Uh, back, uh, I I actually think it was a sport, right? Like okay, I didn't know it was fixed. This is probably until I'm maybe like seven or eight, right? Yeah, eight years old, and then um, and then when you kind of see that entertainment side of it, like how how the promos are done, all the backstage stuff, then you kind of get okay, okay, this is actually all kind of the fix. I guess they, they don't like to say, it, but the fix is in, right? But um, that like his character drew me in and like that i guess a lot of it has to go with that stone cold the rock rivalry and that's the main thing drew me in. and then on the wcw side the coming the beginning of the nwo and just like that being that cool heel like you know like that attitude era aspect of it that's that's what drew me in. now if you see the shirt behind me this is i i hope uh when you were in grade school in history class they taught you about the superstars back in the day but uh, you take a look at that uh, shirt behind me. There, there was a real SummerSlam back in the day with all those gentlemen. Mm -hmm. A true test of a wrestling fan to me. You take a look at the, that shirt. You can name all those people off the top of your head. Well, okay. So my eyesight's pretty bad, so you have to bring it closer. But, okay. but yeah, but if you could bring it closer, then I probably could. It's just like we're gonna we're gonna change the whole uh, <laughs> shifting of positioning the shirt per perfectly, so that's not gonna happen. But, oh yeah. Uh, oh, okay. Okay. But I, it's uh, funny we're talking okay. about it because I'm looking at the back of the shirt and I'm saying to myself. That was the era which I was really like, like that's when I got into it. So I what had, year is that? So this would have been, I would assume now late 80s, if not very early 90s. I'm gonna guess 91, somewhere around there. 91, okay. So from I can't make out everyone's face just because it's a little further back and my eyesight's yes. kind of bad. Okay. But I do see Macho Man on there. Right. Well, that's on your shirt too. But like Macho Man front and center. I own way too many Macho Man shirts. Yeah, yeah, you own way too many Macho Man If it's if it's 91. Yes. then that might be a bit too early for taker like there's like i see like a white face in the top right corner there but i can't like again my white eyesight is a bit bad so no problem we got ultimate yeah. warrior we got warrior mr there. perfect okay Kurt Hanna, yeah rick flair's in the middle there bret hart and the yeah. heartbreak it Shawn michaels young but like baby face Shawn michaels right like the, <laughs> when you had that full those chubby cheeks <laughs> so that was kind of my era and yeah. Hulk Hogan was already the champ but yeah I was a macho man guy I was a million dollar man guy I remember when Razor Ramon first came to WWF Ooh, yeah, yeah. before it was WWE right 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 so that's what drew me in and I, I still love that era that's my favorite I think the area the era that we really we grow up in mm -hmm. I think that that is always the one that's going to stick to you and Timur exactly I think going into today's episode it's funny because in my mind, you know, wrestling was in the toilet for so long. We are going back. If not already, we are in a new golden era. I'm feeling really good about wrestling. I feel good where WWE is at. And to me, it begins and ends right now with the bloodline and Roman Reigns. That is a faction. That is a shtick, a gimmick that has been carrying this company now for practically what we're going over over three years now yeah four years at least probably it's close to four years close to right? four years with yeah. with roman uh yeah. coming up to a thousand days as champ yeah. yeah but i know you caught our recent ep uh, you know since we're taping this but the last episode of smackdown i'm mm -hmm. sure you saw yeah. it yeah one of the best i would say we have seen in a long long time and we can finally do our countdown because the end of the bloodline is near well, yeah. Well, we've they've been saying that now for about I say four months, right? Um, I think they still got. I think they'll still still probably take this. I, I see it going to SummerSlam at least, right? Um, at least, at least for maybe, sure. With the, with the with the anything everything to do with the tag team um, title part of it, right? And uh, I don't see Roman dropping the belt till WrestleMania, to be honest, next year. Like I, I just that's the feeling I have, right? Um, but like, I guess we'll get to him individually in a second. But if you Let's discuss go. Bloodline, yes, right? we got, we got, I yeah. got an agenda for you today, Timur, because yeah. I know you're a Bloodline expert. This is really yeah. important stuff. <laughs> so we're gonna go step by step today. Yeah. First of all, the Roman Reigns speech on SmackDown when he finished telling the Usos what he thought of them, and that the the tag belts are coming back to the Bloodline, but not the way they think. It's gonna be Solo and Roman taking it in. 
what was your reaction going through that speech and how do you think that that came across well like first of all i think it's it's a testament to how much of a improvement roman reigns has done in in through this bloodline um um storyline in his promo right like i guess that was like the knock on him when he was kind of coming up in the shield is that the other two guys had more of the character down and he was mainly the guy Vince would want in terms of the look, right? So that's why he was pushed and And then, the, you know, like the wrestling community found out that he was the heir apparent and they turned on him just because when they find out that you was the guy being pushed, they turn on you. So they wouldn't give him a break even though I was always a, always a fan. But the promo, like his promo has improved so much. And even, I guess, in the bloodline, like because he has Paul Heyman, right, to speak for him. So he has... It's not like Brock Lesnar; he never talks, right? But when he does talk, it's you see the passion now. You you see that you you can see the express just the facial expressions, right? Like a lot of the times, he says things without saying things, right? So that 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 turn that he did, where he was like, "Yes, they will be coming back," and and then he says it's going to be him and Solo, and then you just see the look on the Uso's face, right? And then he turns to the, I think it was Jimmy who he turned to and just in a mocking, condescending tone, like, were you laughing at me? Like, just pie face at him. Just, Do I look like you know, a clown to you? Yeah, yeah. Do right? I make like, you laugh? Am I a clown like, to you? Like, 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 I think they would basically be like, um, you know, like when they did the Goodfellas uh, parody for WrestleMania, he basically brought that up. He's like, he's like, are we shooting, 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 a, shooting a commercial again, right? Um, and and it's just, just that, I mean, if this was happening like three years ago, if he did that, like, Jey Uso, Jey Uso would have like, gotten physical right away, right? But that character aura that he has, and now you have Sola Sokoa basically seeing that this guy is doing that to his blood brothers, and yet he is, un- like, in character, obviously, he is following this guy, this guy's lead, like, blindly, right? So that was that was, that was was amazing television, right? I think, just to kind of touch on what you were saying, like, this is probably the best storyline in wrestling in the last I think easy to say in the last in the last twenty years, maybe like maybe fifteen years, but fifteen years for sure. You can probably go back twenty years because I haven't seen a storyline this long that's keep people engaged for so long, right? And it's funny. Um, I actually saw like a, um a clip of John Cena uh, talking about the bloodline like a couple of days ago, and he's giving. If you remember, he came last time him and Reigns faced off, right? He basically, it was like a shoot work promo, right? Where he basically said Reigns to Reigns that, hey, they brought me back because you couldn't, you're not fit to carry the torch. Like kind of some, I, I, I may not be wording it correctly, but somewhere along the that's what he basically said, right? And now for him to, which part of it was obviously in storyline, but part of it he was actually, you know, kind of taking a shot at Reigns, right? So now in this interview, he says, Roman Reigns, he's basically done things his way where no one else has done it like this before, right? In terms of being the guy in the industry. And not only has he made himself over, but in this entire storyline, he's made like six other people over as well. Like if you count all the guys in the bloodline and Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens, right? Um, like that's like seven people that are significant. And obviously each of them had their part too. Like Sami Zayn, the whole thing was naturally kind of he got over on his own as well, partly. But without Reigns, like none of that is happening, right? So I think, I think we still, like I was kind of, expecting that, hey, after WrestleMania will be done and kind of this is the downfall. But because now they have that other title on Raw, there's not really a focus on someone chasing Raymond Reigns for a world title at the moment. So to do this tag team um, storyline between them and, and I'm, I guess I'm curious to ask what you think will happen, but that we'll get to that, right? But let's say let's say Reigns and Solo win. Like they, they, they get... Do they get you know undisputed championship? Do they get one of the belts from Zayn and um, Uso, uh, Zayn and um, Kevin Owens, right? And then Kevin Owens and Zayn defend the one belt against other teams, and then we have the storyline with the Uso then Solo and Roman for the other belt, right? Like there's there's so many possibilities. Um, it's it's very exciting. It's very exciting. It, look, uh, I mean, you said uh, a mouthful in a minute there, but yeah. uh, I I hear what you're saying, and you know, it, there's so much that breaks down for me. First of all, if you've never seen it live, I heavily suggest when you, you there, when WWE is in your arena nearby and you know the Roman's going to be appearing, you have to go. Even if he doesn't wrestle, when that music comes and plays and he walks out slowly with the wise man and you salute and you do the one, 
you you just feel the shivers. It is the best. It's one of the I, I re- watching wrestling live. I got to watch them in Montreal, Hell in a Cell. I was the only one that acknowledged Roman in the whole arena. Everybody else was booing <laughs> the heck out of him. It was amazing. I got to say, you know, I'm on record on uh, on video here, uh, podcasting wise, that I thought for sure Cody was taking the belts. Did not want it, but I thought that's where it's going. On unofficial betting websites, the odds, you don't even know what it was to bet on Roman. Like it was, the odds were stacked against him. If you put money on Roman Reigns, somehow you found a betting site, you would have made a lot of money on Roman Reigns that time. And it hit me, you know, when I watched Roman win, I said, of course, they're not going to let him lose. They're going to get him to his thousand days. They're going to bring up Cody just enough just to bury the hell out of him right. and show him who's really boss. Because they, they, they actually were not big fans of his dad back in the day. And yeah. so it's yeah. a whole big thing with that. Yeah. But I definitely saw that. And then when we're coming here now, you know, I always joke around. My sources are telling me, but look, if you're on the inside with wrestling and you know where to read and you know where to watch, by the time SmackDown and Raw come on, generally you have a pretty good idea what's happening. Like the sources are pretty good on this stuff. This one, I tried to not read anything before I watched that episode of SmackDown. I didn't see that coming in the slightest. I didn't see that coming even a little bit. I thought that they were going to do one more match of Sami Zayn alone versus Roman. I didn't see that coming. I didn't Mm -hmm. see the blow up to the Usos, the way he was pushing them around. There was about to be a blow up. I love it. I love it. So I think this is, again, must watch TV. If you're at all a wrestling fan and you have not gone to watch that episode of SmackDown, Go on uh, on YouTube. Go and watch on WWE's uh, YouTube channel. Go watch the clip. It's five minutes. Some of the best TV you're going to watch. Now I got to ask you because you brought it up. So let's just jump into it. What the heck is going to happen with this championship match? A clash of the champions. Uh, Night of the champions. Uh, I'm going to put you for point blank. Time more. Do you see Solo and Roman walking out with those belts? So I guess part of that is if they're going to split the belts, right? Because right now they have and like they have Raw and SmackDown tag team championship belts, right? And um, Bloodlines on SmackDown only, right? Um, and then if you uh, like if you saw from Raw earlier this week, it's not just a bloodline feuding with Kevin Owens and Zane. It's like which is another interesting part. They had like four different factions, right? It's like is it brought that kind of attitude era feel to me again where you have like one team in one corner, another team in another corner, Paul Heyman standing by the Titan Con, right? So if they split I think I I think they are gonna split the belts. And I do see Reigns and Solo taking the SmackDown belts off of Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn if they're planning on doing the split. Because that's the only way you can progress this to make it Usos versus um, Roman and Solo at SummerSlam for the belt, right? If they keep, because they can't be taking both belts off Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn unless unless they want to stretch this story out even further. And what they're going to do is have Roman and Solo win both belts at Clash of Champions. And then Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn ask for a rematch, but they only they only grant them the rematch for the raw titles. So that way they get those raw titles back. So I think okay, this is just this just came in my head now this second. So Roman and Solo win both belts at Clash of Champions. KO and Zayn ask for a rematch. Somehow Roman said, okay, we'll give you it, but only for one belt, right? For the raw belts. In that rematch, the Usos try and come and help Roman and Solo, but somehow end up costing them the loss. So now the Raw belts are back on Zayn and Kevin to deal with the Raw. That's how the Usos come back in the title picture and fight Roman and Solo for SmackDown. We're, we're on the same page here. We're on the same page okay. here. We're on the same page. What I'm going to tell you this much, I was going to do the split of the belt for Roman. Okay. I would have had it that Cody was going to win the belt. Yeah. But he didn't read the fine print. He only won one of the belts, and Roman keeps the other. So Cody's off the raw with the championship belt. Roman keeps his belt on SmackDown at the end. But they didn't do that. So what did they do? They just invented a third belt out of the blue. So now Roman's carrying around his two belts plus the third belt. Lord knows if they create heavyweight tag team belts, and there's a third set of tag team belts, I'm going to yell. We, I hope in WWE we never see six man tag belts. Yeah, I don't yeah. want to see intergender tag team belts. I don't want to see lightweight, flyweight. I don't want to see diva belts. I don't want to see th- uh, uh, the 365 championship. <laughs> Thir- whatever. Hardcore, uh, hardcore champion. Hardcore championship. No, <laughs> let's keep the amount of belts. It's fine. Yeah. So, but where I'm seeing, I, there will be a split of the belts at some point. 
But where I see it, this Clash of the Champions, Night of the Champions, is like this. I agree that Roman and Solo are about to win the belts. Mm -hmm. I think the Usos are going to try to help them, which is also what's going on in Damage Control. That's how they're splitting up all these factions, mm -hmm. where you try mm -hmm. to help, and your right. help goes against. Mm -hmm. And the Usos cost them the belts. Then there's a big blow-up. And eventually, we are going to see one of the Usos, if not both, against Roman and Solo. But I think it's going to be... Whichever brother turns on Roman, we have to have a, a, a match there. And I think it's going to be primetime J. Oh, yeah, yeah. Until we're going to get to Solo in a moment. Let's not worry about Solo right now. Okay. But the Usos, the breakup, it's going to happen. I don't see them walking out with these belts. But, man, I'd love to see it. Just give them all the belts at this point. I want to see Paul Heyman walking out with Four a wheelbarrow belts. full of belts. He's going to carry all of Roman's belts in there. Yeah. And did you notice, by the way, that Roman was eyeing the heavyweight belt as he was yeah, walking yeah, away? Yeah, he walked by. He did walk by. He did walk by. He kind of, I guess it was just kind of like just to see what it was. And that's the thing. Like, if, if he wins these tag team championships, like, that's four belts for the guy. Like, come on. Right? Like, Paul Heyman is going to work out to carry all those belts. <laughs> He's going to need a wheelbarrow, like I said. So so you are thinking that Roman and Solo are walking out at least with one set of belts? At least not one. At least, if not on this show, then there's going to be some sort of um, progression where... Um, oh, actually, yeah, I actually, yeah, they will back. Well, I think they're, they're walking out with one. Yeah. Okay. At least one. Yeah. Yeah. I hope you're right. I'm going to yeah, pray yeah. to the wrestling gods that you are right. I don't see it happening, unfortunately. Uh, but regardless, it's going to create tension with the Uzos. We're heading yeah, in yeah. that direction. We agree on that much. Yeah. Now, with the heavyweight belt, just for a quick snap, mm -hmm. we got, uh, we have AJ Styles facing, uh, uh, Mr. Monday Night Messiah, yeah. the Seth revolutionary, Franklin. the evolutionary, you know, freaking <laughs> Seth Rollins. Seth Rollins yeah. I really want to see AJ win this belt. I love AJ Styles. I love the phenomenal one. We are going to see uh, him lose, are we not? Well, they kind of shot themselves in the foot by putting a SmackDown guy in the final for a Raw championship belt, right? So you kind of have lost all suspense there. I mean, you're still you're gonna you're gonna get an amazing match out of it on those two guys, right? One of the best. The match, yeah, yes. Yeah. Yes. The match will be absolutely amazing. But I do agree with you. Like, had it not been for the brand split, it just like like even though Seth Rollins has been kind of on a tear in the last like six months, right? Um, this just almost feels like you know when they introduced the big the, the WWE version of the Big Gold in 2002, and they just gave it to Triple H, right? This kind of feels like that. Or at least they're having a tournament this time. But, you know, they're just, it feels like it's just been given to set, right? Because there's no one else on Raw that they feel like can really carry it. So if AJ Styles was on Raw, he would be the perfect choice, right? To, to be the champion. Um, but I guess just the way the draft, like you can't undo the draft, do it two weeks after it just, just started, right? Like I know eventually the draft gets watered down after like six, seven months and everyone ends up appearing on each show anyways, right? They do this every two, three years. But it's still, it's only been like three weeks. So yeah, it's going to be, Seth who's gonna win. Um I I don't know how much how long of a reign they're predicting. Obviously, they want him to be a fighting champion because they have reigns on the other show, it's not fighting every day, right? Um or ever. Yeah, or ever. Um Gunther obviously with that IC and because they have reigns as tech double champ technically on that show. So I don't see them doing that double champ with Gunther of IC and world title, right? Um there's I don't see many legitimate contenders to Seth. On, on that Raw show. So he may have like a six, seven month run with this. So we do agree that we, we're seeing Seth to win this thing. I think there's yes. no doubt about it. Yes. If if AJ Styles wanted, I guess he would have had to move over to Raw then. But then he leaves his faction at SmackDown. Yeah. That doesn't really make sense. They should no. have... Look, what they should have done is the same thing that back in the day... So. Million Dollar Man wanted the heavyweight championship back in the day, but he couldn't beat Hulk Hogan. Mm -hmm. So he pays Andre the Giant to do it. <laughs> but you. there was a second ref, and yeah. it all imploded. The, the best solution was to strip the belt and make a tournament. But it was not a combination of triple threat matches. Mm -hmm. It was one-on-one, -on -one, and it was a whole hierarchy sphere. So like bracket tournaments like the NHL, that's for the Stanley Cup, like the NBA does for the playoffs. That's the only real solution, Timor. One-off matches, and you keep advancing. That's what I was hoping to see. I was worried that they were going to just hand somebody a championship. But here, these triple threat matches felt kind of empty. I don't know why they had a SmackDown at all. 
I think it all really silly. I don't know why the Miz was there. I don't know what business he had there. How is Gunther not involved with this? Mm-hmm. How is Roman Reigns not involved with this? Mm-hmm. I don't get any of this. But regardless, we're here now. I think if they give it to AJ Styles somehow, I think you've vindicated yourself. You gave him the best wrestler that deserves it. But you're going to give it to the company guy. You're going to give yeah. it to the Raw guy. And I'll go on his merry way. What is going to happen is Gunther will lose his belt at some point by some kind of shenanigans. And he will get the heavyweight belt within the year. Mark my words. We'll get to him in a couple of weeks. Okay. Yeah, no, I do have him winning by the end of the year for sure. It's just, I don't, I don't think they're going to have Seth win and then lose it in like a month. Right. Nope. So probably Survivor Series, but like we'll, we'll, we'll get to that in a couple of weeks and see, see where we're at. That. Yeah. And if you've again gone to live wrestling and as much as you love and hate Roman Reigns, the crowd loves Seth Rollins all day long. They sing along with him. There was, I think, the European tour. They had 15 minutes of them doing, whoa. Like, he is over, beyond over. Cody Rhodes is getting kind of stale a bit. Sorry, Cody. And Seth is the man, and that's where they're going to go off with it. And Cody's got his own feud, and somehow they'll bring him back to facing Roman. But regardless, the story yeah. is getting told, not told. Where I see it going, so you want Roman to lose the belt, right? It's going to happen. He's got to get his 1,000 days. I got the guy. This is the only thing that makes sense eventually. And it's Solo Sokoa is going to turn on him, period. Why they have Solo lose to Cody Rhodes, I have no idea. Mm-hmm. He should have been undefeated. But regardless, it has not tainted him. He's only gotten stronger. When his music comes out, when he does a song, ah, Samoan spike and he yells, you know. Solo is over. Solo is, is on a roll. He's kind of looking at Roman a little crooked there. It's still his brother's. Mm-hmm. And eventually, when Roman least expects it, Solo is going to turn on him. That's your WrestleMania match. Solo, oh, wow. new champion, the end. And he's going to create his own faction. And maybe Rhea Ripley wants to come along for the ride because they had kind of googly eyes at each other. <laughs> but you have a bunch of people as far as between NXT and in other minor leagues, uh, wrestling's around. There, there are cousins training as we speak. Mm-hmm. We can bring up the next generation. The Rock's mm-hmm. daughter is coming. Yeah. By the way, The Rock can also show up at some point and smell what he's cooking. So there's a lot of ways of this thing to go, but uh, I see Solo as your uh, next guy because Roman at some point has to go film movies. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's the thing, right? Um, Roman is already like kind of one foot out the door, right? And the contract he negotiated is kind of built on that. I mean, look, everyone's been waiting for The Rock for like three years now, right? Um, like I'm one of his biggest fans. So like... Um, that would have been great, but I think I just don't see him coming back to fight Roman at this point. Like he may come back in a supporting role, kind of, right? But I just don't see him coming back to fight. I mean, I, I hope I'm wrong. I do want to see it, right? Because his last, if you recall, his last match so far was against Eric Rowan in like seven seconds of WrestleMania, right? So I don't want that to be the last match that The Rock wrestles ever in his WWE career. Um, so it would be ideal, but that that's a pretty pretty bold statement expecting solo to win at WrestleMania next year. Um I, I see the storyline aspect of it, right? Like where he sees maybe like Roman kind of just beating Jimmy down. I definitely I'm like main event Jay and Roman is definitely happening. Like right that that story is coming full circle. Like right now you see Jay kind of getting in between um because he's drank the Kool-Aid right now, right? So he's trying to protect Jimmy. But we're gonna see, you know, Solo probably turn on Jimmy under uh, on Jimmy under Ray, under Rain's order. And then Jay trying to fight and kind of just taking a beating. And then, yeah, like I can see it slowly kind of, um, like if you recall, this happened with Evolution back in the day, right? Where Triple H first kind of turned on Randy Orton had Batista kind of doing his dirty work for him. And then Batista kind of playing the solo role here, solo support role in this capacity, slowly realized that, hey, I can take this guy, right? And won the Rumble, uh, won the Royal Rumble, and then chose to go after Triple H and kind of that's what made him a star. So I do see the perils in the storyline here where Solo is kind of playing the Batista role here. I'm going to throw one last thing to you. It'll come down to it that it's going to be an actual battle for the head of the bloodline. And they're going to put it before the council. Yeah. And they're going to have all the members, all the new members are going to show up. And at the last minute, The Rock is going to show up. He's about to give his blessing to Roman. And then he's going to give him the eye, give him the people's elbow, and he's going to raise Solo's hand. So... I see The Rock involved with this as well, and people are going to lose their minds. Yeah. Put him in a tag team match. Put him in a 
triple threat match, put him in a six man tag. I don't yeah. care whatever it takes to get the rock into this yeah. ring yeah. with solo and Roman at the same time. I'm all for it. And SummerSlam coming up in 2023 is in Detroit, Michigan. Mm -hmm. And if it's going to be Roman against Jay, I will be there guaranteed. Oh, wow. Okay. Mm -hmm. Summer. Yeah. That's, I think that is where I see like that this chapter of the bloodline closing at SummerSlam, at least with, like with the Usos uh, being like focally involved in it. So, the, and they're teasing it. You know that they love teasing it the same way they did with Sammy. They push Sammy around. They push Sammy around until one day it's going to be enough. This past SmackDown shows it's coming and just mm -hmm. wager time and it, it means that smackdown becomes must must t must see tv in my estimation time more we're out of time today but we will be back next week i got a surprise episode for you one of my favorite topics uh we're gonna talk about modern day wwe jobbers <laughs> and oh, why okay. they are in the positions they are Oh, you need multiple episodes for that. <laughs> Tamur Qureshi, a pleasure. Thank you for co-hosting today with me. And we'll see you back next week on Professional Wrestling, the podcast.